Hello and welcome back to Justice for Olivier Panis. The 1997 season is finally underway. Properly, actually, no more false starts. Australia is firmly in our rear view mirror, which is something that F1 cars actually don't have. We leave round one with three world championship points. It could have been a podium if we hadn't cut the penultimate corner trying to get past Frentzen, but considering the unfortunate circumstances originally, I feel like I've gotten away with one quite heavily there, so I'm not gonna complain. Michael Schumacher won the first round. In terms of the constructors, Ferrari take an early lead, but only just from Williams, and Prost are on the board at least. Let's see what we can do in round two. And round two takes place here at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, better known as Interlagos in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a classic Formula One circuit. Formula One has raced here 38 times since 1972. The first time was a non-championship event won by Carlos Reutemann. Second time in a row we've talked about a non-championship race won by Carlos Reutemann. Um, I've got nothing to add on that, it's just a coincidence. The first official Brazilian Grand Prix in Telagos was held a year later in 1973 and despite some time away from the track in the 80s where F1 went to Rio, uh, this has been the main home of the Brazilian Grand Prix, in fact it's hosted it non-stop since 1990. Now I just wanted to do a quick update before we get into the serious matter of qualifying about uh, charity updates, there have been a couple more um, charity predictions that people have put into the pot. I'm going to pop them on screen now, but there is one that I've mentioned already this season that I just want to remind you of because it affects specifically this race. Simon Corr said he thinks Heinz Harold Frentzen is going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix and what a popular result that would be. I'm a bit of a Frentzen fan myself, um, so keep an eye out for that. If we don't win it, hopefully he will and uh, that'll be a bit more money in the pot for a charity to be decided at the end of the season if he does. Okay, time to qualify. In real life, Jacques Villeneuve was on pole position from Michael Schumacher, Gerhard Berger was third, Mika Hakkinen fourth, Olivier Panis was fifth, and John Lacey sixth. This is the round where people start to pay attention to Panis, where he starts to show off what he's got in that Prost. And just for comparison, Shinji Nakano, his teammate, 15th on the grid. So, our target will be fifth. Um, we did well in qualifying last time out, but as I alluded to, having done a version of this race before, I kind of know what's ahead, and I'm not confident. <laughs> so this, this is gonna be probably quite sobering after round one. As ever, the thing to look out for is the color of the sky. Is it going to start raining on us like it did in Australia? Are we gonna have to get in some laps early? Once again, I've been tweaking with the setup ahead of time, doing some uh, some tests, following the forum that got sent to be my racing Di Milano. Follow the template for that, it's very low downforce. We can gain a lot of time in sectors three and one, but the twisty middle sector could be a problem. The sky's beginning to darken, and if I look up from the commentary box... Okay. So glad we caught that. So it's clearly about to rain. So we need to get some laps in before it tips it down. Classic Interlagos. I mentioned that you could get a fuel line failure and I didn't think there was a way you could catch. Oh, ca yeah, I've worked out what that is, by the way, that random looking back. That is just a control design issue with the game. Obviously your left analog stick is your left and right. It's pretty standard for a lot of controller-based racing games. But if you press in the analog stick, which you sometimes can do when you're full lock on the steering, um, it looks backwards and you can't change the controller configuration. So every now and again, I just might have a look behind me at some of the most inopportune moments. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, fuel line failure. Um, I didn't think there was a way you could catch it before it ruined your car. Apparently this purple smoke out the back compared to the white smoke of a potential engine failure so that's the two different coloured smokes we've got to keep an eye out for if we can get in the pits while the car is smoking it won't just you know set on fire fully which is preferable i've really not found my rhythm yet and the pressure of getting in the laps before the rain comes is real what's this going to be We've seen today. Well, it's 
and true to form, I've completely botched the following corner <laughs> as if to ruin that advantage. I'm clearly not cut out to be a racing driver. They just panic every time I realise I'm quick. This <laughs> is rubbish. I might be able to get the majority of my laps done and I won't feel so bad about skipping out on a few. Because I know it might get drier towards the end of the session, but I ain't waiting around today. I've got work in the morning. And that's not like a euphemism or a joke. I've got work in the morning. It is about getting my angles through this middle section. Oh. It took me a little bit of F195 of that season to work out really how to just nail the car positioning. Now it's moved to the analog stick, it's kind of a different game. Well, of course it's a, it is a different game, it's not. Shut up. What I mean is, I think it's going to take me a little bit few races in this season to fully hope dial into the car positioning. It looks as though the rain is beginning to ease off a bit. Oh okay. I didn't realise the rain had fallen. So is that gonna be a false alarm? Are we just gonna have a dry session and a bit of grey sky? Oh can just have some improvement and our personal best. I don't feel like we're anywhere near the front. Seventh. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. That first split time is actually faster than the current fastest qualifying lap. The second split time is probably the slowest of any qualifying lap. Shit. It's always the way that I seem to do great first sectors, great final sectors, and great middle sectors, but never on the same lap. They're just all dotted about on different laps. I know I was supposed to kind of wait because, you know, time's improved throughout the session and I was supposed to kind of give it a bit of time to see what the representative times were but I thought it was going to rain so I've just ended up doing an old school all 12 laps at the beginning, be fine oh, how I miss <laughs> there's no runoff curb on the exit of there can at least end with an improvement come on No. So, the starting grid for the 1997 Brazilian Grand Prix. Pole position is taken by Jacques Villeneuve, as in real life. And as in real life, Schumacher is alongside him in second. Frentzen, though, much better in third. Alessi, fourth. We'll try not to hit you this time, John. I'm very sorry. The question is, where are we? We're outside the top ten. We are 11th, just outside the top ten, alongside Shinji Nakano. Okay. So, what happened in real life? Well, Jacques Villeneuve won the race from pole. That makes it sound dead easy, but actually, it wasn't. At the start, he got outdone by Schumacher, ran wide into the center S's, into the gravel, lost a load of places. If it wasn't for the fact that there was a red flag, I think there was a few crashes, and I think Barrichello Stewart stalled on the start line, they basically got to redo the start, and he got to start again from pole. Very, very lucky. At the restart, Schumacher beat him to the first corner again. Now, eventually he got past him. In fact, at the end of the second lap, I think Villeneuve got straight past Schumacher and pretty much drove away with it. But a bit of luck there to get him on his way. Behind him, Gerhard Berger finished second and Olivier Panis finished third. And this is the race where people start to pay attention. Like I said, this is where it was a great result, no matter what. Yeah, last time, sure, fifth is good, but only seven cars finished. This time, he got a podium ahead of Hakkinen, Schumacher, Alacy. It's a great performance. I mean, a big factor was also the tyre war. Bridgestone had just come into the sport, Panis and Prost had Bridgestones, and they seemed to be making the best out of the harder wearing tyre. It really served them well. So, this is the start of his golden period 
it's our target to try and match it and finish third. But like I said, I've played this race once before and uh, I'm, I'm just not quick here. So I'll be lucky if I get points. Okay, here we go. The lights are coming on. Five lights on. They go out and we are underway in Interlagos and it's another sluggish start. We've dropped two places already. And again, the AI just swipes across in front. Oh, oh no, I've been run into. <laughs> just give me a second. I'm just processing that. That's, uh, I felt like I got a knock from behind. What obviously didn't help was once again, <laughs> the, uh, the little whole look behind glitch occurred and um, yeah, we have to look at the replay for that. I can feel another qualifying penalty like we, like we imposed on ourselves in the F195 series coming because between Lacey and that, probably need a bit of a slap on the wrist for that one. Still, there's nothing we can do about it now and there's black and white flags in this game. The game didn't see fit to punish me, which doesn't really mean very much, but... Anyway, we're in currently no man's land. We're in the top 10, but now we need to go chasing the McLaren of David Coulthard. Oh! Took too much of the inside curb. It's bounced me wide. And there's a Jordan there. A preferably... Probably very angry Jordan as well. Oh, and he's done me. Oh, my word. Can we get him back? No. Oh, dear. Let that go. I've been... Giancarlo Fischi-Keller <laughs> with a brilliant move. He's mugged me off there big time. And to be honest, he's got a bit of his revenge. Dear me. What an awful start to this race. Come on, let's try and just... Oh, for crying out loud, sod off with that. Yeah, I'm not going to be speaking that much at this moment in time because I'm, I'm really trying to concentrate. The race I always refer back to is Spain from Justice from John Lacey, where I just, I just wasn't there. I just wasn't quick. I just couldn't do it. And it's starting to feel like that here. That's a real shame because I love this track. Oh. See, that's me trying to push. I swear to God, if that's Shinji Nakano. Oh no, oh no, is it Shinji? Oh, Shinji's held off and he's got a McLaren on him now. Of hacking in. Wow, he's a long way back. Oh, oh we've got a slow moving arrows. Oh dear. But, incredibly, that has slowed down the Jordan of Fishy Keller and out of nowhere we might suddenly have an opportunity for 8th place, so let's not mess this up. Good run out the exit, we're on the outside. Is he going to give us the space? He does. Well, opportunistic to say the least. Thank you to either Pedro Deniz or Damon Hill. We're up to ninth again. I just don't get how they're so quick through this middle sector. Like, I feel like I'm... I'm probably not taking it the best, but I'm also not being, like, ridiculously slow. And they're just all over me. You know, I followed the forum um, to try and, you know, pick my setup. Used it as a reference for quick times, but the thing is... Is that more geared to one lap times? And actually, for the race... I don't need this much straight line speed. I could do with making things a little bit easier on myself through these corners. 
because this middle section he might try another move on me gap holding about the same to Coulthard up ahead at 7.8 you're going to need to really suddenly turn it out We can at least hope that Heinz Held Frensen's doing a good job up front. We can but hope. Oh dear. There is a little bit of a panis train developing, it has to be said. <laughs> I mean, the one small upside is this makes me feel a little bit better about having to restart the championship and then suddenly getting points out of nowhere. I suddenly feel like this is the F197 universe just redressing the balance a little bit. So I can take some small solace in that. Yeah, I've abandoned <laughs> the chase down of, of Coulthard. I just don't want to make any mistakes and give up what I've got. I know there's no points in it, but, you know, you want to fight for every place you can, whether there's points or not. Frank will be with this Look at that. Oh, dear. Well, there's still some learning to be done about how to properly set up the car and, for me, about how to drive it as best as possible. It's a finish. It's a gain from where we started. There's no points today. Still a long way to go, you know? So, that is the final result, and it is a win for Jacques Villeneuve, his first of 1997. Heinz Harold Frentzen, so close, second place, but he does manage a fastest lap, which is something. Jean Alessin, third. I mean, you love to see it, especially after what I did to him last time. Great stuff. Schumacher, fourth. Berger, fifth. And Eddie Irvine, sixth. We finish ninth. 22 seconds off the pace. So this is what it does to the World Championship. Jacques Villeneuve takes the lead for the first time from Michael Schumacher. Heinz Held Frentz is in third, Jean Alessi is fourth, and then Irvine and Berger a joint fifth. We are seventh despite also having three points. We are also joint fifth, let's be honest. That's, that's just a, a display glitch. We are joint fifth with Irvine and Berger. So it's only 13 points behind. It's nothing to panic about yet. In the meantime, Williams take the lead of the Constructors and they go 10 points clear. They were always going to be the team to beat. And they've now taken the lead for the first time and are commanding what it is to. Ferrari second, Benetton third and Prost fourth. Only four teams have managed to score. No points for Jordan, no points for McLaren yet. Oh well, you can't win them all. Although I've not won any in this game doesn't matter next time we are off to argentina and it's a huge race in terms of what happened in real life for olivier panis and one where hopefully we can put things right and change things for the better but we have to be quicker than we were today leaving it there thank you so much for watching remember the full series of f195 is available now just for john lacy you can catch the first two rounds of this championship and also the other round first round of this championship that I mean, it's still fun, but it doesn't count. And I've just revisited Le Mans 24 hours for the PlayStation as well to try and beat that, so go check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again for the next one very soon.